We know that transpiration is the evaporation of water molecules from the leaves, mostly through the stomata. You can have a look at my first video on transpiration if you need a quick recap. This is a piece of equipment we can use that can measure the rate of transpiration. It's called a potometer. They are really tricky to set up and luckily at GCSE you wouldn't be expected to set one up, but you do have to understand how they work. We have a leafy shoot pushed through a bung with its cut off end in water. This tube is continuous with a capillary tube which is also filled with water. A water reservoir here and a tap to control the entry of water from the reservoir. A ruler or some kind of measuring scale and the capillary tube end is in the beaker of water. This equipment will be held up with a clamp and a stand or something like that. I haven't drawn it here just to keep the diagram simple. As water evaporates from the leaves, more water is drawn up into the leafy chute from the water below, and this will cause water to move along the capillary tube. So that we can measure how much water is lost by transpiration, we need to introduce a bubble into the capillary tube, which can be done by momentarily taking the end of the capillary tube out of the beaker of water, but then returned very quickly back into the water. Once the air bubble has been introduced, we wait for it to reach zero on the scale. Then you measure how far the bubble moves in a set time. Just in case you do get asked, it's worth remembering that water isn't only drawn up into the leafy chute because it's being lost as transpiration. There is also photosynthesis taking place as well, just in case they sneakily ask you that question. We can use this potometer to investigate the factors that affect the rate of transpiration and make them our independent variables, such as temperature. In our experiment design, our independent variable needs to have at least five different values. So five different temperatures, then measure the distance moved at each temperature. The further the bubble moves, the higher the rate of transpiration. In between each temperature, we will need to reset the bubble to zero. And we can do this by opening the tap of the reservoir, which will allow a small volume of water into the capillary tube, which will push the bubble back. Then close the tap. We should repeat measuring the distance at each temperature. So we have at least three sets of results to make it easier to identify any anomalies. And if there were any anomalies, we could discard them when we calculate a mean. Then we could change the independent variable, being sure to control all the other variables, of course, just one independent variable at a time. So let's take wind speed, for example. If we're changing the wind speed, then you need to make sure that the temperature is kept the same. Let's have a look at an exam question. The diagram shows a simple potometer. The apparatus can be used to investigate the effect of light intensity on transpiration rates. Now this could be confused with your photosynthesis required practical, but it is measuring transpiration. I haven't mentioned the heat sink before, but this is filled with water so that it can absorb heat energy from the lamp. And that makes sure that the temperature doesn't affect the rate of transpiration to make sure that light intensity is the independent variable and temperature should be a control variable. Describe what happens during transpiration. So this is just a nice simple recall. Water evaporates from the leaves through the stomata and just in case you want to add an extra key word in there, you could just pop by diffusion. Describe how the apparatus can be used to investigate the effect of light on transpiration rate. Start with the lamp as close as possible to the potometer, then move the lamp away from the potometer at set distances, and at each distance, measure how far the bubble has moved in a set time. The heat sink is a transparent tube of cold water. Explain why a heat sink is used in this experiment. Well, I've actually already explained that. So let's just write the answer. It absorbs heat energy from the lamp so that temperature doesn't affect the rate of transpiration in this investigation, ensuring that light intensity remains the only independent variable. Temperature is a control variable. 
So the table shows the results from using the potometer. We can see we've got distance of potometer from the light, the distance the gas bubble moved in one minute, and then there are three trials at each distance. The mean distance the gas bubble moved along the tube at 10 centimeters from the light was 72 millimeters. The diameter of the tube was one millimeter. Calculate the volume of water taken up by the plant. Use the equation volume equals pi r squared times L, where r is the radius of the tube and L is the distance the bubble moves and pi is 3.14. Give your answer to two significant figures. Just check in, this answer is in millimeter cubed per minute, which is the same as in the table, so that's good. We don't need to do any conversions. So R is 0.5 millimeters because the radius is obviously half of the diameter and the diameter is one millimeter. So R squared is going to be 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.25. L is the distance the bubble moved. So we will use the mean distance of 72 millimeters. And then we just substitute that into our equation. So 3.14 times 0.25 times 72. That gives us an answer of 56.52. And we need that answer to be to two significant figures. So we round that up to 57. Let's just quickly do another maths type question. You can have a look here, lots of stomata. How many stomata are there in one millimeter squared? We can see that there are eight in 1 25th of a millimeter squared. So we need to multiply eight by 25 to make that into a whole millimeter squared. So eight times 25 is 200. And I want to show you this question, which is really hard. You know how level nine is the hardest, the highest level for GCSE. I think this question is like a level 11. So if you can do this, that is pretty, pretty impressive. The diagram shows structures on the surface of a leaf. Photosynthesis occurs in the guard cells, but not the epidermal cells. Explain why this is important in the control of the rate of transpiration in the plant. Well, we know from the previous video that for the stomatal pore or the stoma to open, the guard cells need to fill with water and become turgid. So what has photosynthesis got to do with this? We remember our photosynthesis equation is carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose and oxygen. So the glucose concentration inside the guard cells is going to increase. It's not going to increase in the epidermal cells because there are no chloroplasts in there. There's no photosynthesis happening according to the question. So if you've got glucose concentration building up in the guard cells, then that's actually lowering the water concentration in the guard cell. So that's going to cause water to move by osmosis from the epidermal cells into the guard cells. So in other words, this is what I tell my students is a hidden osmosis question. You think it's about something else and it's all about osmosis. The increased glucose concentration inside the guard cells means that the water concentration is low. Water will move by osmosis into the guard cells from the epidermal cells. This will cause the guard cells to become turgid and the stomatal pore will open. If you're still with me, well done. That is a really high level question. Anyway, good luck with your revision and I will see you in the next video.